Welcome back again. This time we're going to talk about some more operators. So you hit some of the ones on the list that you're familiar with, you know, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. Um, but you can see this is a long list, right? So some of these you're pretty familiar with, some of them you're not as familiar with. Um, we're just going to kind of hammer through some of them and make sure that you're pretty familiar uh, with almost everything on this list. Um, almost. <laughs> uh, so let's start off with a couple that are easy. These are the shortcut operators. Shortcut operators are for assignment. So it's always like sum symbol uh, and then the equal symbol. Um, and what they are shorthand for is for people that are lazy, right? So if you say a plus equals three, that is the exact same as saying a is equal to a plus three. It is simply shorthand. So instead of writing the variable twice, uh, like that, you write it just once um, and you say plus equals. Um, so it's simply shorthand, there's nothing special about it at all. It just saves you a couple characters of writing the variable name twice. So if we were looking through this, first we assign my int to 40, uh, and then we say plus equals 10, so then it's suddenly up to 50, and then times equals two, so it's up to 100, um, and then minus equals one, it's down to 99. There's a couple more shorthands, uh, and that is plus plus and minus minus. Uh, plus plus is of course how C plus plus got its name. It's the next iteration of C. And so if we had my int uh, plus plus, oh, what it is, <laughs> I forgot. Uh, what it is, is it shorthand for, I said this last time too, um, A equals A plus one, and minus minus is just A equals A minus one. So it's simply shorthand. It's just that people subtract one from a number so often or add one to a number so often they made one. So plus plus would bring it back up to 100 and minus minus would bring it back to 99. Um, so you can see how these two are exactly the same except for the bottom one is even shorter. All right, so shortcuts are easy. You just knocked a whole bunch off the list. The next one that we'll use quite a bit in this class that you may not know is modulus. Uh, modulus is really just like what is the remainder of in division. So if you think back to like, I don't know, when you were a little kid um, and you had to do division like this um, and you said, oh, this will go in three times and that's 21 and that leaves you with two. And so you probably like wrote at the top of your page, you know, like 3R2 where three was the quotient um, and two was the remainder. All modulus is, is it gives you the remainder. So in a real example here, if we said 23 divided by seven, uh, that would be the quotient. Uh, it would just be three because integer math will truncate it to three. And then 23 modulus seven. Um, so remain here uh, would be two. I know it seems simple, Right? It's like, oh, that's such a simple thing. How could that be useful to me? It's so simple. Um, it just turns out to be useful. One of the ways where we use it the most is when we're trying to convert like the number 345 um, and we want to like take the three and do something with it and take the four and do something with it and take the five and do something different with it. Um, it's breaking down the number. Um, so if we wanted to break it down into a variable called huns, tens, ones, uh, this might be new syntax to you, putting a comma between them. Totally valid. It's the same as writing them on separate lines. It's just shorter. It's like saying char huns, semicolon, char ten, semicolon, char one, semicolon. Um, it's just shorter. Uh, but if we wanted to break down that number, the way we would do it is like this. So we would <clears throat> divide it by 100, which in this case would, would be 3, right? It would have worked out fine. Um, and then modulusing it with 10, what it does is it throws away anything that's greater than nine, right? So it just it just lops off um, everything except for the, the, the digit that you want. So this would be uh, three. This one would be my int divided by 10, which would be, you know, uh, what, uh, 34. Um, but then as soon as we modulus 34 by 10, we get four because it essentially just lops off that top one because the remainder, um, if you uh, were to do that, would be four. And then dividing by one, admittedly dividing by one doesn't mean anything, uh, but 345 uh, modulus 10 
is just the 5 because you know the 34 would be part of the quotient and would get lopped off. Um, so we actually do use it a lot um, and one of the main uses is to lop off um, earlier digits. So it turns out to be handy. They're just kind of times it comes up. Uh, a lot of operators shouldn't take too long on those. Uh, next one is called a bit shift. Um, they <laughs> they do exactly what they look like they would do. Um, so this one would bit shift this number over uh, by two. So if you were to bit shift it over by two, um, you would just get left with zero and a one. So like as this moves over, that one goes away. Um, and then as it moves over again, that one goes away. Um, and you're left with just the zero and the one. If you shift it to the left by one, um, then you've got to shift it over and then you've got to bring in a new character. Um, you always bring in a zero. So pretty simple there. Um, so <clears throat> these are actually decimal numbers too if you want to think about it. So shifting it this way is the same as multiplying it by two. Um, shifting it that way is the same as dividing by two. So this is actually a divide by four. Um, and the bottom one is actually a multiply by two. Um, but it's a really fast, efficient way to do it. So bit shifts can be useful. There are a lot of other bitwise operations. Uh, there are some that are considered bitwise uh, and some that are considered logical. Uh, you can kind of see the difference on whether you've got one and um, or one or, um, I guess nots do something different. So let's talk about the bitwise ones first. So the single and uh, and things there. What bitwise operators do <coughs> is they operate one bit at a time. So if we had um, these two numbers here, um, we would and them one bit at a time. So we'd take the, the smallest bit and we'd and one and one and we'd get one. Uh, next one over, uh, one and zero, nope, that's a zero. Uh, and then one and one, yep. And then zero and one, nope. Um, and then if I was to just kind of show you another way you could do it, you could then take that result um, and and it with this. Uh, and what that would leave you with is, is this guy right here. This pattern, by the way, you can just kind of tell that those are going to get blown away and then those are going to be kept as is. You can also use it with the shorthand notation. Um, and, you know, you could use it with hex just as easy as binary. Um, so here, uh, this is actually going to result in the top's going to be all zeros because of um, because of A, because it stops all zeros. And then the bottom is going to be all zeros uh, because of this 0x, 0f. So this actually is going to result in zero in the end. So anding, I hope you get. Uh, bitwise just means do it one at a time. Ors, um, I mean, it's quite simple. You just have to see whether it's one or the other. Um, so that one, it turns out they're both true. This one or that one, yeah, the, the first one got it. Um, then if I did this next line, uh, this would be uh, one, one, uh, because of what A is, and then one, zero, uh, got added because of the back guy. Um, you can also use the shortcut. Uh, so here, and you know, you can use hex or decimal. Uh, so here we actually eventually got the whole thing full. Uh, we ordered enough until it was all ones. So that's ORs. Inverse, uh, pretty simple. It just says bit by bit, uh, flip it, right? So take whatever it was before uh, and just flip them all. So hopefully my uh, lines there were, were pretty clean. Um, and it is the tilde, which is kind of a weird, you know, operator, but, but it's easy to, to use. Um, the last one I wanted to mention uh, in kind of the bitwise is exclusive or. Um, this means is one of them zero or the other, but not both. Um, so that one would be zero, that one would be one, and then, ooh, we hit the exclusive or case. They're both one, um, which means that it's zero. Um, sometimes it's useful, sometimes it's not. So it's one or the other, but not both. Um, if I did whatever my current result is with this one, I would get that. Um, and then if I wanted to, I could also use hex uh, and do that. The neat thing about this one here is that it, it always toggles. Um, so it, if you wanted to toggle the bottom bit, uh, that will toggle it. So whatever the bottom bit was, I knew it was going to get toggled. Oops, kind of got them both there, but you get the idea. 
Those are the bitwise operators. There are also logical operators. <gasps> logical operators are very similar uh, with one major difference. Uh, the one major difference I can say in a single line, um, logical operators always give you a one or a zero as the result, nothing else. So if I was looking at this, um, oh, by the way, one is true, zero is false. Actually, anything that's not zero is true. Zero is the only thing that's false. So if I had this and this, uh, literally what it's gonna do is say, is this non-zero? Um, sure. Is this non-zero? Sure. Um, a non-zero and a non-zero? Yep, so it's essentially a true and a true. This number right here is a false. Uh, this number right here is a true, and it's gonna result in a false, uh, which is, of course, zero. Um, yeah, this one was true, which is a one. This is a zero and a zero, so yeah, that was really false. Um, and so these will result in, um, you know, one, zero, zero. These are the ones that people think of when they think of like true Booleans um, being like true or false, uh, you know, one or zero. Similar story here, uh, one or the other. So yeah, is one or the other true? Yep. Um, this one is one or the other true? Yep. This one is one or the other true? Nope. Neither of them is true. Uh, so I result in a false, which is a zero. Uh, not is just to make things that are you know, true become false, false become true. This thing is currently true, so it becomes false. This thing is currently true, so it becomes false. This thing is currently false, so it becomes true. Um, ones and zeros uh, result in the trues and false. So that's kind of the summary of uh, bitwise operators and logical operators. You can see that they are actually kind of quite different, but they're both ands, right? Or they're both ors or they're both nots, but they, they implement in very different ways. Uh, a couple of other operators, just to kind of mention them. This one you've seen a ton, but I thought I'd be clear. This is the assignment operator. Uh, if you say the word equals, that's not really the right word. This is, this is the assignment operator. So you are assigning seven into the variable A. While I'm talking about the assignment operator, I will say that if you say assign seven into the variable B, um, it, it will do that. It will implement that task. It will also like return as its result, as if it was addition or something, it will return the seven. Um, and then that seven um, would get assigned to A as well. Don't typically do this, but I thought I'd mention that it does actually work. Um, it actually kind of gets you in trouble if you accidentally use it in an if statement because it'll assign it and return a non-zero, which is true. Um, so I just thought I'd mention it. If you want to talk about the word equals, uh, that is equals equals, kind of like the double equal sign. It always gives a one or a zero as a result. Um, you could use it for assignment, right? So is, does four, um, is seven equal to four? No, it's not. Uh, so that would assign zero into A. Of course, that's not how you really use it. The, the place you really are gonna see it a lot is in if statements. So say like, is this 42? In this case, it would return one, which is true. The if statement would fire. Um, <clears throat> there are a lot more whenever we start talking about if statements that we're going to get into. Um, you know, there's the ones we've kind of talked about so far, uh, the not, uh, the not equals, um, and then less thans that you're used to as well. When we get into if statements, talking more about C, uh, we'll really uh, hammer out all the details there. All right, that's kind of all the things we've got with operators. Uh, hopefully the, uh, the table here, uh, you now recognize um, a lot more on there. We are not gonna talk about uh, pointers, so we're not gonna talk about addressing and dereferencing, uh, but most of the other things on there we've covered for you. All right, that's it for today. See you next time.